the National Football League on EA Sports. And we'll see Marte Mapu, who had a strong showing last week with an eight-tackle game. It's the Falcons and the Texans, and it comes your way next on Madden NFL 24. The weather this time of year in the South, perfect fall football weather. And we've got the roof wide open here at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in the heart of Georgia. So then we've got a week five matchup in store here. As it'll be the Houston Texans taking on the Atlanta Falcons. Hello again, everyone. Brandon Gordon along with Charles Davis. And Charles, we take a look at this Falcons team as they interplay. They come in on a pretty good roll here, winners of three straight. And going back through the tape, I thought they looked pretty good last week. It was a solid win, a comprehensive win. Meanwhile, for our visitors, the Texans, they were losers their last time out. They're going to try to get back in the win column, but obviously they're going to have to do that in a hostile environment. And sometimes it actually works to your advantage. Now you've got to band together your team. The quarter of the season already in the rear view mirror and off we go in week five on EA Sports. Now Isaiah Pacheco going to bring it out of the end zone and he returns this to the 22. So here come the Falcons now to get the football for the first time. They're let out by the former Oregon Duck in his ninth NFL season now Marcus Mariota. And I think it's safe to say that and I heard him say it in the post game press conference that was a team win last week because he didn't really play up to his normal standards on two interceptions. No touchdown. Yeah, didn't offset it at all, but the team found a way to get it done. They'll start out on the ground with Jones. And he's able to pull it forward to about the 29 to shy of the third. The numbers on the ground for Jones the last week. 20 carries, 138 yards, and a touchdown. Just an excellent performance from them on the ground last week, and that speaks to an offense that is operating at a high level on all fronts. Of course, that man running the ball, he's just seeing the field so well. But don't forget about his offensive line. The run is certainly more well out there, and I'm confident they can repeat it again this week. And that will go for 13 yards on the keeper and a first down. Running right, Jones. And he finds a little bit of room four yards. going to be second down. They look at the defense for these Texans. They come into this one way down to number 23 against the run of the NFL. One thing you do know, you know they'll be fired up because they're facing a top five rushing attack. And even if they have really success against them, they got to remember they got to sustain it because teams are top five. They don't stop running the ball. They get things done. Sometimes I'm just going to my head here trying to figure out what was going on there defensively. How did you know his head in the middle of the field? If you're going to lose a receiver, make sure it's someone on the short side of things, not deep downfield, that can hurt your defense. They'll find Everett there complete. And the stiff arm proved fruitful for a second, but the daylight quickly snuffed down. This is second and eight. To throw is Mariota. With a middle into traffic, and that's complete. And the Falcons are going to have a first and goal as the tackle is made at about the five. A terrific opening drive as they're knocking on the door, first and goal. Now Jones. And now a long third. He does get a couple taking it from the five down to the three. Here we need to see some tenacity from this defense because they've been pushed right down the field on this opening drive. They've got to find some way to push back, and that's a good first step. Jones will struggle to get to the line of scrimmage as he'll be tackled back at the four-yard line. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. Here's Mariota. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. But it took the shot. Didn't get it. There's definitely a difference here because they have a chance to get seven, maybe eight if they push. 
pushed in. Instead, they'll likely settle for three. Now opening drive, holding him to three. Psychologically, maybe a win for the defense. Tucker's kill is good. Tucker gets him down inside the five. Tucker gets him to finish the field goal. To think that maybe they were a yard closer. That would have made their decision tougher, and I think they likely would have gone for it. But in this situation, they just decided to take the three, and I think it was a smart move. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. So here come the Texans now for their first drive. They're led out by the second year throw out of pit, looking for a big jump in year two. Kenny Pickett. And there was a positive in last week's loss. No interceptions thrown by him. But he only threw one touchdown pass, and you know he wants that to improve. He might even consider that as part of the reason that they couldn't take the win last time out. Hopefully we'll see a more aggressive bridge number this week whenever they're near the end zone. Short completion, just four yards. And that will bring up second down. Now the NFL's leading rusher in 2021, Jonathan Taylor. And this will be a Texans first down as the tackle made just shy of the 40. That's a nice run right there, able to get to the outside. And so many times, defenses say, okay, we got you hemmed in. But if you're running the football, at least you know where everyone is coming from. You have to worry about the backside at all. That allows you to run with a little bit more confidence as you traverse down the field. And nothing much materializing there in the first down run. He'll get a couple of minutes in. Second down and eight. Taking a look to throw it here. That's good. And now the ball's out from the midfield. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. So it goes as a fumble, but the key thing, not a fumble loss. Yeah, that, that's, that's big, isn't it? I mean, it, I remember watching teams play. The ball might be on the ground a number of times during the game, but the other team doesn't get it. That's a huge difference in the ball game. And in this case, they were able to retain possession. Now a second and six. Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. And the offense knew that they were already starting to walk back as that one was accepted. And that false start penalty is certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. One of the slant, that's Robert Woods. So the completion good for seven there. And now we got a third and four. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. Oh, and the hard count might have got him. This might be a first down. And that'll be a free five yards for the offense. Just like a tennis match, that's just an unforced error. Stay alert, don't jump early, and give them free yardage. There's a first and ten now after they successfully drew him off sides. Here's Pickett. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. You talk about this Falcon defense. They were very good in the run last week against Jacksonville. I have to admit, I was extremely impressed by what I saw. They ended up getting four sacks in the game, stayed in the face of the quarterback the entire time, made it difficult for him to step up, and five receivers downfield. And that's what they told us this week, that pressure on the QB is key. It's a gain of 19 down to the 19, and it's a first down. That's a nice catch there. Remember, they had the fumble earlier. No way he was giving up the ball in that situation. Secured it tight to his body and picks up the first down. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. They'll throw again with Pickett. Got this complete to the tight end pits. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. So from the 17, here's second and seven. Working out of the gun, it's Pickett. It's Kelsey on the ground. Only able to gain a couple there, and it brings up third and five now. The completion was given up, and that's why he plays zone defense. So you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and he'll give up next right after the catch. Touchdown, Texans. 
Class of Gets. His second touchdown on the season. And the Texans have answered that early field goal to take a first quarter lead. A nice throw there by the second year quarterback. And I don't believe that was the kind of play he would have made as a rookie. Because usually your rookie season is a continuation of your college days. A lot of one read. And if you don't have it, you just take off and go. Now he's settled in the pocket a little bit more. Reading the field and getting to a second and sometimes third progression. That was a nice play. Sanchez now. He'll kick it away following the touchdown. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. So for the second time in this one, we get set to see the Falcons offense. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're going to please if they didn't punch it in for six points. But that's have to remember they did put points on the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Second down, another shot for Jones. And he'll get about three here as he's out to the 30. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're not doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature in which you don't get hurt. And he's going to have the Falcons first down as he's able to get one yards there on third and five. And Brandon from our time in college football. The receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree. One thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots. And set up and catch the ball. I think we just saw that there. Well, we saw that indeed. Pick it up the first. After one, seven, three, the score on EA Sports. So here's a first and ten at the 38. Back now in Atlanta, second quarter action. The Falcons with the football. As they've got it with a first and ten. And he'll be taken down the now before he works it past the 50. 15 yards, first down of Atlanta. He's working on this a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? Mario on first down. Out of the backfield, this is Aaron Jones. And he goes down the number four this inside the 25. Oh, wow, that's a huge 22 yard gain. Yeah, good play there. When you have a running back that you can use at the wide receiver, when he has that kind of versatility, you do as they did there. Get him out of the backfield and give those defensive backs something else to worry about. They had to settle for three last drive, hoping this second go around ends in six. In good position, first and ten. On play action, Mariota. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Then their backs up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple of more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. And a fine chase on the right side complete. And now bounds all the way down at the three. So he gets too far beyond the line, and that's an easy call for the official. Mario and a throw. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. That's on Pro Bowl center Jason Kelsey. Temporarily out of field goal range now as they come up on a second and long after the holding call. After the penalty, it's Jones. Busting through contact. Just wasn't a huge hole there for him to operate. Stop just inside the 35-yard line. A long way to go here on third down for the eighth play of the drive. Pass is going to wind up being complete. As a corner, you have to be able to run with guys.
thoughts on that one as well. And kudos to you. You didn't jinx it. And from back there, Elias Moore will just sit on this one. And it'll come back to the 25. Here comes Jonathan Taylor and his teammates. A good job in the passing game. Decent job in the running game. But really, they've been more effective uh, through the air. We'll see if that shifts at all as this goes on. Thus far, it feels like they're playing this game in reverse. Normally, you run to set up the pass. Here it feels like they're passing, hoping to set up the run and be more effective later on in the game. Yeah, you can do it both ways. We usually talk about it in the reverse, however. No doubt about it. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. They get back to throw. He's going to loft one deep left side here. Got a man that's caught at the six-yard line. A huge play there for Houston. 66 yards. Every defensive staff harps on limiting explosive plays. Job not so well done there. Yeah, they talk about it all the time. A lot harder to stop, though, isn't it? And we think of an explosive play. Most offensive staffs define them as passes of 20 or more yards and runs of 15 or more yards. They want to zoom and pass that number there. Taylor. And I'll bring him down after just a short pickup. Give him three on the game there. Second and goal. Now pick it. To the right side, complete to Taylor. And he's going to lose yardage here. They'll wind up losing a couple yards here on the play. And this brings up a third and goal. Able to send this one through. Well, I don't know if they would have gone for it on fourth and goal anyway, but the sack on third down pretty much made their mind up for it. You're exactly right about that, and this is a tough place on the field to take a sack because, as you just noted, they took the decision making away from them. Now they have to go for a field goal instead of potentially going for it. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he's up past the 20 of the 22 yard line. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. Last time I remember their drive stalled, but thanks to their kicker, put a long field goal to at least get them three. Now here they'll try to do better and find the end zone. And in our experience, how much fun is it for coaches to know that they've got a kicker who can nail it from long distance? Now the hard part is, as an offensive play card, you don't want that in your head too much where you're relying on it. And he goes out and gets the job done for them, but I'm quite sure he would be content to just kick extra points from here on out. Yeah, absolutely. No question that his teammates would be okay. But he'd be kicking the extra points as well. 49 yards rushing for him now. And what was his team carry in the ball game? After the run by Jones, here's first and 10. From the gun, they'll try to run it. And they're going to stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and 10. among rookies this season to go here's Kenneth Walker and he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down no gain on the play there so that doesn't help now they're looking up at a third and nine situation Situation, analyzing things, feeling the pressure, and then stepping up right through the middle and sprinting for a first down. A couple of first downs on the drive already. As they'll go from the 47 now on first down. A quick throw caught by it. And now the ball's out, fumbled near midfield. Oh, one of the linebackers has got it. And his guys are going to take over at their own 48 yard line. We have seen this before. And we know coaches preach about this and work on it all the time. 
catch the ball. You know there's going to be some traffic somewhere. They've got to put it away and secure it as they try and get downfield. Here comes Jonathan Tanner and his teammates. The passing game, they've had more success there than the running game. Maybe something they game plan for. How come they didn't tell us about it? Because they wanted to keep it a secret. <laughs> we did ask, didn't we? But I think what happened in this one is they've realized that they've established the run pretty well, and teams are going to key on that. They thought they could open it up and have success through the air, and that's exactly what's going on. Yeah, they've had success at least so far here in the second quarter. Back to throw, pick it. This is caught. It's Williams. And he's going to get this down near the 30 yard line. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Good strong throw and catch right there, and so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. Woods, the receiver, in motion lap, and they'll go on the ground. And they give him four yards there, it'll be second and six. Taylor. And pretty good running as he'll be close to a first down at the Falcons 21. It's a five-yard gain, but they'll still be a yard short here at third down now. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. Here now, third and a yard. Looking to throw, pick it. Short throw caught by Pitts. And he's going to have the Texans first down as they're able to convert, albeit not by much, on third and a yard. So here's a first and ten now down inside the 20. Pick it. He'll look to throw it. Oh, he's got it in wide open. Good play. And the Texans are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the one. Not quite enough to get into the end zone, but what a nice play there. He makes the catch, tries to turn up field and get to the pylon, but doesn't quite get there. But they're going to be set up with a first and goal from very short range. They'll run here with Taylor. And he's in. Touchdown, Houston. Jonathan Taylor. His second rushing touchdown of the year. And the Texans will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. And the thing you have to love about Jonathan Taylor, he's a shifty speed guy most of the time when you hand him the football. But he's not coming off the field when they get down near the goal line because he's as tough and gritty as they come. And he finishes things off here by getting into the end zone. Extra point by York is out there good. And that pushes the lead up to 11. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. And here's Isaiah Pacheco to return it. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the truck. The Falcons now are going to go on offense late in this first half. And with him down two scores, you wonder if they might try and put something together, even if it's just to get into field goal range. Mariota now to throw on first down. He'll drop this out of Ethan Jones. And he'll get it down here at the 23. Clock running and the Falcons moving with a sense of urgency. Now Mariota. He's got his man. That's him at the tight end. And he'll go out near midfield at the 49. First down, Mariota. He's going to throw one up for the end zone. And a penalty flag comes in as that one winds up incomplete, but the contact is going to move the ball well downfield. So that the icon will give him one more play. It'll be an untimed play as well. Now the half will end after this one, unless. There's another defensive penalty. Tucker's kick is good, and that will do it for this first half. So we have reached halftime here in what's an eight-point game. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports halftime report. Coach. 
Okay, Brandon, thank you very much. More from you two in just a minute. But first, let's get everybody caught up to what's going on around the NFL here in Week 5. Texans going to take over here to start quarter number three. This offense set to begin the third quarter, and Charles, if they had a checklist of things they wanted to accomplish in the first half, certainly at the top of that list would be having the lead, and they got that here. That's always the most important box to check, isn't it? But also, they've had some success in their passing game, so probably an empty box. Establishing the run, they're on pace with fewer than 100 yards in this one, so now they want to make sure that they get that going so they truly have a control in this ball game and down the stretch, being able to be balanced, either throw it or run it, and try and win this ball game. Seven yards there at a first down. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football. Sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. And unable to get down there, there so take this up to about the 37. They work now on second and nine. They give the Taylor out of the gun. And as he stopped at the 44, that one good for seven yards. And now hang on here because he appears to be shaken up. Hopefully, obviously nothing serious here. Medical staff are going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. Third and three. They'll try to run for the first with Taylor. That'll be tackled by two yards shy of the line to gain. A one-yard pickup leads to fourth down. We talked about the fitter, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try to fool you. They get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. It's at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. Here comes the Falcons offense. It's their first possession of the second half now. And both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively, just not able to get anything going. So what needs to change? I think a lot of the guys will go back and review, so to speak, because everyone has someone assigned to how did each play work. Okay, what did, what did we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back to some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. Let's see if they take the advice of Mr. Davis. No gain on the play. And that's going to lead to a third and 11. Wrapped up here, tough spot, needing 11 yards to pick up the first. He finds his man complete. It's Watkins. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and that's going to bring up the fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. He punted five times in the win last week as this one's away. Houston set to take over. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense, maybe take command of this game yourself. Tackle made there by Merrick Rowe. From the 34-yard line, here's second and five. Back to throw. Pick it. And this is going to be incomplete. To give you an idea of how accurate he's been throwing the football in the second half, this 
Just a second in completion. If he's not locked in, that means everyone's locked in because to me it's like throwing a no hitter in baseball. The pitcher may get the credit. A lot of people making plays behind him in the field. Ball going deep here for Taylor. And that's the ball away and it falls incomplete. Evans trying to get a little slip there and sneak the back out of the backfield and turn him into the primary deep receiver. It's good coverage defensively. They were able to break it up. And Sanchez on to punt here as he sends this one away. Field it at the 20. It'll be a 44 yard punt, six on the return. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. The Falcons ready to take over. And Charles, a very uninspired effort. The last time we saw them out there was a quick three and out, and they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is they it happen again right here. They've got to get going. Give them a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Throwing is Mariota. Over the middle, complete. That's Rockets. They'll be hit down at the 33 and five yards on the play. They have come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. They'll try and run for it with Jones. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive over. I think I saw the little shoulders just drop there. And what I mean by that is they found able to relax a little bit because that was an important play call. They needed to pick up that first down at this stage of the game. Yeah, coming forward, another quick drive and out. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. He finds his target, it's Evans. Going to gain a 40 on the play, and 38 down. To throw Mariota. And that is incomplete. You get the sense that they're saying we're not playing up to what we're capable of and we're deep enough into the game that the early jitters are long gone. But they should now have some sense of continuity. And a big rush by the Texans in the market. And they are going to take possession of the football. And there, Charles, the pressure wasn't coming off the edge. That block came straight up the chute up the middle. And that's when you're going to ask the personal protector what happened because that position is often called the searchlight. And you start that light right up the middle before you scan to the sides. That's where your immediate threat is, and it's your quickest threat. Why he didn't see that and pick it up, that's going to be a big question they'll have to ask. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. So it's the big left tackle who gets tagged with a hold. And sometimes you're actually executing the block well, and he starts to slip off of you, and instinctively you reach out and grab him. And when it's done like that, it's often seen by the official. And he's going to be taken down right at the 10 yard line. Charles to move the chains that time, they had to complete it in the double coverage, and they got it done. And it's never easy overcoming multiple defenders, but he sure made it look simple. Found the right spot to exploit, and won his one on two matchup. The false start backs him up five, first and 15. From the gun, it's Taylor. He can't get him down. And it will surge forward from that five yards down to the 10. Offensive linemen are creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. And a short pickup there down to about the nine. It'll be a pickup of only a yard. And just like that, it's third down. They get a look to throw in here. Toward the play. Texans take the block punt and convert it into six points. Well, Charles, he's still a young signal caller in this league, second year in the NFL, but I don't know if last
last year as a rookie if he would have worked through his progressions like he did on that touchdown pass. I think you're right about that. We're seeing him grow up right in front of our eyes because when he went to his primary read, he recognized that they were all over that as he continued to survey the field, picked up another target, delivered a pass exactly where it needed to be. A very mature play for the second-year quarterback. Extra point by York is out and good. And the lead is up to 15 now. It is fielded right at the goal line. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. Atlanta now coming out on the field. First and 10 now for the Falcons and Mariota at their own 19-yard line. And he'll begin the drive with a give to Jones. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. They'll go again to Jones. And not much doing there. Maybe a yard up to the 23. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play. And he couldn't even get going for the football. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. But the passing windows are just not there. And that's just another example of how great this defense has been all game long. And that's exactly what a top 10 defense can do. They can really change the game tempo and frustrate you as you try to execute offensively. And the football going back over now to Houston, Texas. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, as they, as they score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, but you can take the spirit away from another team with their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, but you're right there on the break, aren't they? We have played three quarters. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Three yards to go on second down, and they've got three tight ends out there. Jumbo set, running straight ahead, Taylor. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 73 yards rushing here for Taylor. He's got a first down. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be in here. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. And he's going to be stopped up at about the 47-yard line. And I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where there'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down the game. Right now, they want to show the world up to the challenge. They get 14 on that one. Good for a Houston first down. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. Back to Taylor on first down. And after the good game last play, this time they say, oh, as he's going to be stopped by scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. They'll try the right side with Harris. Pretty nice, aggressive run there before being brought down just inside of the 30. Five yards on the carry there, and it leaves him with third and about six yards to go. Here's Pickett. Throw there, going to be incomplete. No covers bust by the defense here. They did a nice job accounting for everybody, and that led to an incompletion. York able to send this one through, and that will extend their lead even further. So that all 
Bowles certainly a final piece to this puzzle. A three-score lead. I don't think there's any coming back from there. Well, you don't know I'm going to get on you for giving up on the game right here, but I do think you're right in this case. This late in the game, two scores is tough enough. Three? I'm with you. That seems out of the question. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. First and 10 now for the Falcons and Mariota at their own 26. They'll try and start this drive in the air. He finds his man complete. That's Watkins. And quickly they get to the line. Now Mariota. Evans has it left side. They are able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. First and ten. Here's Mariota. There's Evans again. Complete. Second and five. Again, it's Mariota. And this one's incomplete. They lead big, and a major part of that has been how they've taken their play to a whole new level this second half. No points allowed since the break. And you can add another incompletion to the total number that they've forced in this runaway contest. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Man open. That's Jamar Chase complete. And unable to break away. They stop him a few yards shy. The Falcons go for it, but it doesn't work out. And that will force a turnover on downs. Well, they've clearly made a conscious decision here to be more aggressive in the late stages of this game here in the second half. And I get it in this situation. You know, if you want to be aggressive out near midfield, you feel good about your defense maybe, or just, hey, I thought I had a proper play call. But how about the guys that just stopped them? How good do they feel right now? Hey, if you want to go for it here, we shut you down. Go are on the bench right now feeling great. Second and seven. On the counter, it's Taylor. And they get him behind the line, so that short gain on first down quickly to gain it. They'll wind up losing three, and now it's third down. And right where this set of downs started, they need a full 10 here to pick up the first down and move the chains. Throwing on third down, here's Pickett. That's swung out wide to Harris. And they'll bring him down right at midfield, and he is well short of the first down. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. Now here's Regoberto Sanchez. He'll boot it away from about his 35. Averaging over 50 yards a punt so far as this one's away. And he didn't quite have the bank spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. Here comes the Atlanta offense. Fence now ready to take over here. Now this game went off the rails early for them and never really got back on track. And these fans, they were expecting to be on the other side of the scoreboard. But that is not the case as we play on here in this fourth quarter. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. A first down throw for Mariota. And his throw is going to be incomplete. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. On second down, Mariota again. Pass incomplete, but the flag in the backfield, and this might be a roughing call. So the yellow flag came out, and that leads to a new set of downs for this offense. First and ten. Mariota now from the 50. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there. And it's second down. Here's Mariota. He turned that into a nice game. Gets him eight yards closer for third down. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. Mariota on third and two. And he will not be able to hang on to the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. And they're in 
indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. They'll go with Jones. And he's brought down, but not before picking up the first with a very effective step over. Mariota now. And he will slide down, but a penalty marker down as well. And it looks like this is going to be all for naught. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. Working out of the gun, Mariota. That is incomplete. That's coverage you'd expect to see in a tight game late. Not the long sided game like this. They are not letting up. Mariota. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Even with such a big lead late, the effort hasn't lapsed one bit. If the offense wants to score some points in this one, they're going to have to earn it. These guys are not giving up anything. Under pressure, and the Texans able to get in there for the sack. How about this? Fourth and long, and they're going to go for it. Now on fourth down here, that pass knocked away and incomplete. The Falcons go for it, but it doesn't work out. And the Texans take over an excellent field position. Well, being just short of midfield, they decide to take a crack at it on fourth down. They don't come through. Sometimes it's just showing confidence in your defense. You know that they're good, and they'll take care of you. A lot of coaches during the week will announce to their team when they're in guys are going to go for it. In defense, you got me. A little bit of a challenge to them to see if they'll pick up the rest of the team. See how they respond now. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. Ball on the 40 now. Here's second down and seven. They go to the ground again with Taylor. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Now they're staring at a third and eight. That last play backwards a yard. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. And now whistles and a flag. And I think we got a jump here. A bit of a jump there, CD. He breaks the line, and that'll be five yards. And you've got to stay more disciplined than that, Brandon. That's just a free gift to the offense. And the penalty, a big assist to this offense. Now it's third and three. Set the man in motion too late. This is going to be a delay. No, they accept the penalty, of course, and push the offense backwards a bit. And the delay of game penalty makes this much more difficult. Third and eight. Now a handoff. Taylor with it. And he stopped up short of the first as they tackle him down at about. 36. Call it a gain of five. Fourth down now. So where all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. Now the offense is not leaving the field. They're going to stay out and go for it on fourth and three. So Houston going to come away here with the victory. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second half shutout. Yeah, and think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second quarter. Do you think they thought at all that that would be their last points of the game? No, I mean, what a second half. The adjustment, whatever they did in the locker room, it certainly worked. It certainly did. And you're exactly right. Whether it was 
an adjustment, whether it's just more focus on what they plan to do going in, whether they just played better, whatever it was, it all came together in the second half, and no points were allowed. That's a great way to close them out. So for Houston, they move a step closer to 500 as their record improves to 2-3, and three, and they will head back home next week. Meanwhile, for Atlanta, the loss will move them back to 3-2 and two on the year. And they'll get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week. I'm Brandon Gunn, certainly have to thank Charles Davis, my broadcast partner, and our entire crew. We'll catch you next time right here. It's the NFL on EA Sports.